always felt that I was very uh, empathetic and to the point where sometimes I feel other people's pain. <laughs> um, and so um, to me, empathy was always a very much a fixture in my life. And then I actually I talk about the fact that I feel like some of the reason I have so much empathy is because um, because of my mother, my mother had mental illness and could be very, you know, um, she would yell a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on there, but it, it made me want to be more open and understanding of people. I wanted to, you know, I kind of wanted to be the opposite of my mother in that sense. And so I, you know, I started thinking about empathy and how important it was for me to understand other people and to, to, really start having, I realized I had to have empathy for myself to really be able to do that deep dive inside to really get at what the things were that were bothering me about the way I was raised, about how I felt, you know, sectioned off from a lot of Black society and, and even uh, family members, right? And so I had to put myself out there and make my, you know, that's what, so we can kind of jump into the six steps because the first step is willingness to be vulnerable. Right. And I had to be vulnerable and use empathy to understand myself first. And then I, I, I really felt that once I had that in place, it's like, well, empathy doesn't, you know, a lot, tons of people have empathy. You know, I, it's not, you know, it, it, you have to practice it, but it's something that, you know, I, I know a lot of people have, but they, they can try to put them, at least try <laughs> to put themselves in our shoes. But then what next? So I came up with radical empathy because I was like, we have to take action and create change, right? Because radical empathy means that you are, you know, you, you have the empathy, you're stepping into somebody's shoes, but you also have to reach out to people. And, you know, I, I, I've been working with some different organizations. And, and one thing I have to rem remind our white allies is that you have to listen. <laughs> um, because listening is really critical when you're trying to practice empathy and have empathy. Um, but also give people a comfortable space to do that, right? Because, um, you know, I, I hear stories all the time and I, I you know, I, I do a lot of mentoring and, and, you know, talking to people, especially in academe. And, and one of the things I've noticed is that, you know, even for our allies, they want to be paternalistic, you know, they, they want to step in and, and I've had this experience where, you know, I've had my white male mentor, they've been wonderful. And believe me, I talk about my white male mentors, but sometimes they're a little too paternalistic. And it's like, I, you know, dudes, you know, I have to make my own decisions here, you know, and I, I think I have a, a, enough capacity here to, to manage my life. Um, and so I, I see a lot of paternalism out there for those of us who have, and I, I don't know if you've experienced that, Julie, but I find, you know, it's almost like, you know, they feel they have to be protective of us. So the first is willingness to be vulnerable. And that was one of the, you know, even before I started writing the book, you know, I, I had to, re I realized I, you know, that's probably one of the most important steps because one of the problems is that people have a tendency to just want to take action first. Yeah. Right? And, and I run into that every time I do a workshop, they're like, just tell us what to do. It's like, no, you have to start with yourself and you have to be vulnerable and understand that you are actually, you are part of the problem and part of the solution. So you need to understand yourself first. And once you understand, well, well then you, once you get vulnerable, then you be, can become grounded in who you are. And this is the process I had to go through myself as I was kind of preparing to write this book. So then the third step is opening yourself to the experiences of others. And that was something I you know, had to do in the sense of even trying to understand my parents. I, I spent a lot of time working on a genealogy and, and you know, there's so many stories out of that. But you know, that for me, it was I remember I kind of had a breakthrough one evening where I was writing a blog post and I, you know, I said, you know, I know my grandfather on my mom's side was, was a sharecropper. My mother was a seamstress and I'm a, you know, pr professor with a PhD, Yeah. you know? And, yeah. and then when I, you know, when I read Isabel um, Wilkerson's book, you know, the one th warmth of other sons, I was like, oh my God, you know, my mom and my grandfather, you know, I am their dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that really helped me to get a better handle on understanding even, you know, their experiences um, so that I could then practice empathy. So step four is practicing empathy. And we have to do that all the time. I have to do it all the time. 
um, you know, trying to under, you know, I, I was just listening to a story on on KQD about the Asian the attacks on Asian uh, Americans here in the U.S. So the, you know, which has been terrible. It's been happening a lot here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I said, you know, that's a, an area where we all need to have it. Uh, you know, practice empathy. You know, what is it? You know, what are these people going through? You know, and I, I was thinking at that time, you know, this is my time to, to practice empathy for these people who are, are experiencing these horrible crimes. But then, you know, the next step is taking action. So, what action can I take um, now that I know that and, and try to understand this situation? And every single at the end of every chapter there is a um set of step of actions that you can take so that's why you know when i was writing the book i realized you know i can't just lay this out i need to give people you know concrete actions that they can take and just so people know we've also created a reading guide um that you know pulls together the different uh um you know activities and actions you can do and but i again i will remind people you know it's partly starting with yourself uh, and then moving onward. Uh, so there's taking action, but then the, the real thing is that we have to create change. And that's why the last chapter of the book focuses on transitional justice and um, you know how we can create change more broadly in our country. Because if there's nothing else I wanna do <laughs> is to really create change for our country. And so we can start to move forward and get past, well, I don't, you know, you can't get past it. You know, we have to, yeah. to live, but that we really live with the history and understand it and and start thinking ways we can improve and get past it bridge racial divides that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 